Happy Sunday evening, everybody. So hopefully you'll be able to start seeing me, or seeing my screen anyway, in a minute. I gotta get my second computer set up. Hopefully everything's, yay, everything's working. So that's always good. And I need to turn down my sound. So I can see the comments. So if people are coming in, make sure that you type something when you come in so I know that you can hear me okay. And hopefully the air conditioner is not too distracting. <laughs> it's, it's very warm in my sewing room tonight, so I have to uh, have the air conditioner on. So hi, everybody. Oh, people are coming in. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, Marianne. Oh, Colleen's here. Deb's here. Hi, everybody. It, it, can everybody hear me okay? Is the air conditioner too loud? I can turn it off. It just gets really hot in here. <laughs> you can hear me okay, Denise? Okay, can you hear the air conditioner? Does it make too much noise? I like the... Uh, my, my sewing room is on, on in, gets very warm, so. Hi, everybody. Cool. Can't even hear it. Okay. Yeah, I, it, I kind of got it a ways away from the, from the microphone, so it should be okay. I usually have it on when I teach in the summer. Awesome. So, um, to, to, so tonight we're going to talk about the auto digitizer in Perfect and Burgery Pro. And um, I'm not a huge um, auto digitizer fan, but the one in, in Perfect and Burgery Pro, um, you won't be able to see me, Deb. You'll just be able to see my, my screen. So you should see a picture of my desktop and a, a file opened on my desktop. You won't see me. Because when I share the screen, I have to either share the screen, or, um, or my, or or you see me. <laughs> so tonight you're going to be seeing my screen, okay? Because this is going to be the software. Um, so the auto digitizer, I've always it's I've always had kind of a love hate relationship with it. When I first started digitizing, that's all I had. It was just an auto digitizer. And that's been a long time ago. I mean, it's been 20 years ago. Um, but the one in Perfect Embroidery Pro actually is pretty good. And it's always done a very fair job of digitizing. Um, the one thing about it, though, is you do have to um, do some manipulation of your, of your graphics. So graphics have to be pretty good for the auto digitizing to turn out. Now this, um, I did not give you this graphic because I, this is something that someone asked me to help them with. And it's, it's a graphic for like a softball team or a baseball team. And I didn't, I didn't feel like that was my place to be able to give it to people, but we'll talk about, there's lots of images in the software actually. So um, you can do the things that I'm going to show you with, you can play around with those um, graphics and then you can um, play with the auto digitizer. So I just wanted to tell you how I, I started with this. Um, Margaret asked me to help her with this and um, I found it kind of a challenge because the auto digitizer is something that I've been wanting to teach, but I couldn't come up with a with a good um, a good graphic that we could really use and, and, and have a good result. And I thought this design turned out quite well. And um, the picture is up on the group, so you can see it. I forgot to put the picture in this little folder that I've got open. Um, but it turned out quite well. And But I did have to manipulate the graphic quite a bit in order to get it so, so it would turn out well. So let me show you the original graphic. Um, I'm just gonna open this up and it is kind of like sideways. Oh no, I did turn it over. So this was the original graphic that I was given. And this is actually 
a PDF file. So the other problem is my, you know, the auto digitizer or the software does not read PDF files. So I could not use that PDF file to create anything. So the first thing I had to do was to get this rather complicated file into like a PNG or a JPEG. Um, and I chose JPEG. It was, a, that's, a, that's a picture file. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is do that. Well, so I opened this up in my PDF. This is, you know, just like Adobe PDF reader, you know, the, the uh, reader free version of this thing. And so I have a little program that you can get for free that works really awesome because a lot of people use PDF files now and they don't do JPEGs and we have to have a JPEG for our software. So um, the first thing I did then is I, I have a little program called uh, Bullzip PDF Printer and it's a free, fo fo uh, it's a free uh, program that you can go online and just download it. And you can change, like if I'm in, using a word processing program, I can print, it. it's like a virtual printer. So basically you're saving it as a PDF file. Or in this case, I have a PDF file and I can change it into other formats, one of which is JPEG. So that's what I did is I just opened this up. So this is the JPEG or the, the PDF in the Adobe Reader. And I went up to my printer and I chose my printer up here, instead of my regular printer, like to print it out on a piece of paper, I chose um, Bullzip PDF printer. And I need to, I think I needed to put it landscape. Yeah, landscape. And then I choose print. And instead of printing it, it's actually going to come up, this little box comes up after you install it that says, the PDF printer, it allows me then to change the format of it. So I changed the format from PDF to JPEG. And you can see there's several other, and we could have used PNG. That's another thing, one that you could use. I happen to use JPEG. Um, PNG would work as well. So um, either one will open in the software. So um, I just used JPEG. And then I saved that JPEG in um, you just choose here in the file name and the little, little dots, you choose where you want to save it. So I saved that design and I've already got it, but I saved it inside my little hawk folder here. Okay. And then this one here is the one that I, um, that I use. So that, that's how I got it into a format that I could use it in the software, first of all because it wasn't in a format that I could use, okay? That little free program is extremely handy um, to convert things. And then I do a lot of writing for people and I need PDF files. So I've used it for years um, to do simple things and it, you know, it was free. So I, um, I you just look up Bullzip PDF printer. You ought to be able to find it right away and just download it and install it, okay? So that's how I got this PDF file into something that I could use in my software, first of all, okay? Um, then I looked at this folder, this design, I, I looked at this, this file, and um, when you look at the original one, the PDF, I looked at it, and the way that the auto digitizer works, it's sort of like the way our scan and cuts work when they scan uh, multiple color designs, it thinks in layers. So if I were to run this through the auto digitizer just as it is right now, it would um, do black and then white, and then it would do black again and the gray and everything, and it would all be layers upon layers upon layers. So in other words, the thing would be bulletproof, okay? So it, it'd be like super, super um, dense. And that's what um, Margaret was, you know, experiencing is that it was like so, so dense that you couldn't sew it out and have it look good. 
So the first thing I did is I just looked at my graphic and I thought, okay, we got to get rid of some of these layers because otherwise it's just never going to sew. So the first thing I did, and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the little program that comes on your, your, if you have a PC, I know there's a program on the Mac too, and I don't know what it's called, but on our PCs, we have a little program called Paint. And Paint is a free design. It comes with the, the computer and it's super easy to use. So the first thing I did was I opened up that graphic and this is just my, this is my um, first graphic and, and, you, and you see, this is, this is a JPEG and, and originally it had in it that, um, oops, except I opened it up in the wrong program. So we're gonna right click on it. I'm gonna open with paint. So the first thing I did, remember that black outline that was all the way around there? I just took my little eraser tool and started erasing that black outline all the way around the graphic. And that's how I came up with this graphic that has no black outline around it. So that eliminated two whole layers of um, color so that the auto digitizer didn't have to work quite so hard, okay? And then the next thing I looked at was that this graphic is pretty complicated, okay? And it has, I don't know if you can see, but it has like two colors of, of tan. There's like a darker tan and a lighter tan. And then there's all these little um, swirls and stuff in the baseball bat. And then if you look in the, the body of the bird here, the hawk, there's two colors of gray. And then if I look down in his teeth here, there's white and gray. And then, you know, there's all these things. There's a baseball that's white and gray. And his hand has dark gray and light gray in it. So there's a lot of detail in, in this graphic. And so the auto digitizer really works better with, with graphics that are not as complicated. So I needed to um, play around with this graphic until I got it less complicated. And I did that using paint. And what I did then is I used the eraser tool. I got rid of that outline first. You know, I, I can show you that original outline again. So I got rid of that black outline around the outside edge first. Okay, I don't have that copy of my, my graphic. Got that, got rid of that first. So that got rid of two layers because see there would have been a layer of black and then a layer of white and then everything else on top of it. Okay, so we, we got rid of that. And then let me go back to paint here. And then I looked at it and I, I had to get this less complicated so that it wouldn't, you know, it would find the colors easier. And I wanted to, um, I wanted, to, so I did a lot of working in here and like I got the gray, all this dark gray. Let me make this bigger so you can see. So like I went in here with this, in this graphic, I gotta find the, there we go, okay. So see where those light, those dark gray pieces are? So what I did is there's a little like eyedropper tool up here. If you click on that, you can go find the lighter um, graphic or the lighter color and just click on that because that's the color I want the whole thing to be. And then I go get my little um, paint pot up here and I can click up here and I can make that dark section and it'll just kind of go pixel at, at a time. The other way you can do it is there's little paint brushes and like markers and I can do the same thing. So I always have to choose some of these smaller things, but see, then I can color, I pick the color of the main part of the body and see, then I can color these and get it to be the same color so that it's not so complicated. There's not so many colors in it. And I just played around until I got it the way I wanted it. So I just kind of half redrew the design, okay? So when you're working with an auto digitizer, you got to spend more time working with your picture than you do with 
if you're if you're manually digitizing. So see, I'm just kind of drawing out these darker colors, okay? So, um, and I can use the paint pot quite a bit to do that also, the little fill tool or the fill with color. I get my eyedropper, I want it to be white down here, and then I get that tool. And sometimes it'll fill well with that if everything's the same color. And if it's not, you can use the little brushes to, to color it in. Okay, so I use the brushes quite a bit and I like I wanted the teeth to all be one color just to get rid of some of that detail. Okay. And when we open the software, I'm going to show you. So that's that's what I did. Okay, so that's I just went in and I did a lot of coloring on this graphic because the graphic was pretty decent. I just had to figure out a way to get it so that it wasn't so busy that the auto digitizer would handle it better. Okay. So like over here in the baseball bat, you know, there's a dark brown up here and then a lighter brown. So mine just has one color. Okay. So let me show you then, I'm just going to close this and let me show you the one that I colored. Now, the other thing about auto digitizers is that when they open up in the software and you'll see that in a few minutes, um, the background of the design, let's say it's white, in this case it is, that color will default as not sewing. But if there's white in the rest of the design, it won't sew that either. So this is my colorized version that I did here. And you can see that I made this pretty simple. So I took out all of those extra colors, okay? The other thing I struggled with, you know, the baseball had those little uh, red lines in it, you know, the little stitch lines. And I'm, we're gonna draw those in later because they were so small that it just wouldn't pick it up, okay? And you can see my bat doesn't have a lot of that extra stuff in it because it was so, so detailed that it just wasn't picking it up very well. But when I took them out, then I could have put those back in, you know, like the lines for the bat. I could have draw, drawn those back in if I wanted, but the design only was gonna be like four inches wide and about two inches tall. So I thought, you know what, that's just gonna be so much detail in that tiny space that I just left it out. So you can see my finished, this is my finished graphic that I used. So you can see I altered it quite a bit I got the hat, the hat is two colors. So there's a lighter yellow and a darker yellow. And then the teeth are just one color, but you notice that they're pink now. So I, so when there's white in the design, I know it's not gonna sew because the background's white. So what I usually do is make it some obvious color by filling it with, with that little paint pot and if you don't know how to use paint very well, instead of me taking all the time to do that tonight, um, I could spend a whole night just showing you how to use paint. Um, there's a lot of videos on YouTube about using paint. It's, it's very simple and maybe you've used it before, um, but it really works well with this. And you can actually access paint through the program directly. So I'll show you that also when we get there. Um, but you can see that I made my baseball, which is white, pink, and then his teeth are pink and his eyeball is pink. So that I, I knew that was obviously, I can change that color later, but then I know that it's gonna pick it up, okay? And it's gonna sew it because the background is white and that will also come up with the auto digitizer. So in other words, um, auto digitizers, you have to work with your graphic first and get it less complicated get the colors more solid so that the colors um, can be picked up easily. Okay, so that's what I did with this. And I, just, I use a free program, you know, it comes with my computer. I don't have any fancy programs or anything. And it works, as you can see, it works quite well and everything, and, and this does sew out actually very well. So, okay. So are there any questions about the graphics? I'm gonna show you where some graphics are in the software so you can play around with those. Um, 
instead of this one, because like I said, I didn't feel like this was my graphic to give anybody. So, um, but I just used it because I wanted, I, I worked with this graphic. Um, but the program has lots of images in it that you can play with. Okay. So is there any questions about playing with paint, getting your graphics less complicated? And I also talked about the PDF um, printer, the Bullzip, just so you could get, like if you get a JPEG or a, if you get a PDF and you can't put it in the software. Is there any questions about that? So... You can see I did quite a little bit of work and it doesn't take long. It's actually kind of fun. It's like coloring on the screen. You know, it really was kind of fun doing this. So I spent some time playing with it and I'm like, okay, this is the only way I'm going to get it to turn out. And I thought it turned out really well. Okay. All right. So let's close this for a minute. And um, I'm going to go ahead and whoops, I can hear. I want to close that one so we can bring it up in the software. So let's go to the software now. And you just have to work with your, so, so that's the thing. Like when I started digitizing years ago, that's all I had was an auto digitizer. And I had to do a lot of work on graphics in advance. And all I had was paint. So I kind of got pretty good at paint playing around with my graphics. And so um, once you get the hang of that and you have a decent graphic to work with, it actually does a, a very good job. PEP has always done a good job as an auto digitizer, but then you can fix it afterwards. So you'll see, we're gonna fix a lot of stuff once we get going here, okay? So I'm gonna create a new design at the bottom here. Let me move this up just a little bit so we can get that little thing off the bottom, okay. And to get to the auto digitizer, it's the little wizard guy hat, the little wizard hat up here, it says auto digitizing. And I'm going to click on that. And then it asks you to browse and find your graphics. So my graphic is in my little folder on my desktop. And I'm going to choose that one that I fixed. And I, I will show you how if you need to make more alterations on it, that you can do that right within the software. So it's, it's pretty cool because they have integrated paint right into the software and then you can go into paint direct, okay? So here is my graphic. I am gonna choose auto digitizing. There's also cross stitch and artwork. So you can create artwork in here right through this wizard, which is kind of cool. Um, the cross stitch is um, very, um, elementary. It, it only gives you full crosses and stuff. So I don't use cross stitch in this software very often, but the auto digitizer is pretty good. Okay. So let's click next. And then when you get to this screen, um, this is where you, the one thing that's really important with an auto digitizer is you need to make the size of your graphic. Now you can see that I have pulled this like cropping box down pretty close to my actual graphic because that's also the, the, the program is going to also want to do that background. So try to get it cropped down as close as you can possibly get without taking something out. And then if you set the image size, that's really important because if you don't set your size to the size you want it here, you don't wanna have a 12 inch design that suddenly you, you reduce down to a three inch design or a four inch design. So like this design that she wanted ended up, she wanted to be like left pocket. So it needed to be about four inches or a little less wide, okay? So I want to start with my graphic the right size so that the auto digitizer is looking at that. All right. So in this case, what I did, I have to make sure I didn't miss something on my notes. Um, I chose the width of four inches. Now, if you look at my graphic, my, my little lines are just a slightly outside of that. So it does end up the, the, the actual um, stitch file ends up just a teeny bit smaller. So I'm just going to type in four here. 
And then you can see the height changed also. So it's only gonna be about two, less than two and a half inches tall. So it's not very tall, okay? You can reset the size, you can select all, and then you can also transform it. So like if, if it was still sitting on end, like when I originally brought it in, that's what it was doing. I, you know, I rotated it so that it was setting the direction I wanted it to set, okay? So we'll change the size again. Okay, so it's gonna be four inches wide and about two, less than two and a half inches tall, okay? Then I'm going to click next. So that's real important with the auto digitizer. Make sure you change it to the size you want it so that you're not working with too small a graphic or too large a graphic. Okay. And then the stitching will turn out much better. All right. So we're going to click next. And the software is going to think here for a little bit. And since we played with the image and I reduced the colors, if you look up here, the color reduction has just a few colors. So these were basically the colors I used. Um, it was the gray, black, the tan of the baseball bat, and then there were two golds. And then that pink is going to become white when I get to the stitch file. Okay. So um, there are seven colors and that's how many colors I used in the design. Actually, I think I only used six because there was the pink will become the white. Okay. So um, but if you see something that just doesn't look right here, you can still access paint right through the program. And it's so cool. Now, I'm not sure with those of you who are Mac users, if this is integrated to your Mac program, I don't know how that works because this is integrated with paint. So I don't know exactly how that works because um, I know a couple of you are Mac users, but I can hit this. You can see image editing down here. I can hit edit and it takes me right into my paint program. And this is where I can then finish altering my design directly in the program. The one thing here, make sure if you want to save that after, if you've done something else in the program in PEP, make sure you go up here and file save as and save that again, because otherwise there will not be a file of that anywhere because this is going to come out stitches instead of um, instead of just a picture. So make sure you you file save as in paint so that it, you have a copy of this. Okay. And that's how I got this. Played around with it beforehand a little bit and then I found more things I wanted to do. So I played around in the software. Okay. So I just think that's so cool that we can go right into the program and do it right in PEP so we don't have to make you only have to go back and forth and back and forth, okay? So I have my, my colors that I want. Um, and again, I can go in there and edit it as I need. I can preview down here and it basically it's previewing my graphic, okay? And the color reduction on this turned out quite well. After I played around, I don't have like 20 colors anymore. I got things reduced, the colors reduced to a very doable color, um, amount of colors. And I and the detail is still good, but it's not overwhelming, okay? All right, so let's hit, now at this point, I'm done, all right? Until we're ready to fix it, because you because there's a lot more fixing at the end, but it is possible and it didn't doesn't take very long. So I'm gonna actually show you what this looks like and then we're gonna fix it. Okay, so I'm just gonna click the finish button at this point. And now it's going to create this into stitches. Now it might take a few minutes because I've got a bunch of stuff running on my computer. Um, it takes a few minutes for it to render. My computer's pretty fast. So, okay, so here it is. And I'm gonna make it realistic by touching the little um, square that looks like a cube over here and you can see it did a fair job. I mean, it looks kind of weird. You know, there's like weird satin stitches here and then some of it is, is, is filled and then there's weird satin stitches over here. And, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it, but I'm not real happy with it. But the colors look pretty decent and we can fix it, okay? 
So now we're gonna fix this so that it looks nicer. So the first thing I did, so is it, does everybody know what I did so far to get here? Okay. Is everybody okay with what, what we've done to get to this point so far? So this is our first, you know, this is our first little, little um, design, but there's a lot of stuff we can do to fix this. Okay. So, um, I'm going to look at, oh, I got a thumbs up. So everybody's good, doing good. All right. So the first thing I want to do is if you notice, I'm going to pull this up so you can see it a little bit better. I just pull this line up so you can see the, my sequence view. So I'm in the sequence view, which is the little, the little lines down here. And the first thing that's going to sew is the black and it's really the outline. And I want that to sew last. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab that black. I'm just going to grab a hold of it with my mouse. I'm going to pull it down here to the bottom. Okay, because I want to sew that to sew last. Whoops, it didn't go. Let's try it again. Second here. Let's just move it down and drop it on the last thing. There we go. So I, you want to move it and then drop it on the last item and then it will it will drop to the bottom. So now when I look at this, the black is a little more prominent and it covers up a lot of the strangeness, but it still is not done, okay? So I moved the black to the bottom. So we're going to kind of work from the top down, okay? So the next color in here was kind of a tan. And this is the baseball bat. Now, the baseball bat, if I click on the little plus sign, the first part of it is a complex fill, which looks good. And I would like, though, if you look at the rest of it, it says that it made it into a satin stitch. So what a, what an auto digitizer does is it just kind of randomly decides what kind of stitch it needs to be. So I don't really like the fact that it's a satin stitch. I think I would rather have it be a fill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these little pieces as I, as I click on them, I think you'll see them. Okay. All these little satin stitches and stuff. I think I'm going to change one, two, four, and five. So like one is already a complex fill. That's the larger part of the bat up here. Um, two is this little piece here. Three is the little thing around the handle. Now, I think I'll leave that a satin because that looks kind of neat that way. And then the other two pieces, I would like to be a fill. So all I have to do, and I can do this all at the same time. I'm going to do this satin stitch. I'm going to hold my control key down. I'm going to do that satin stitch. And I'm going to do the round end those three satin stitches, I want those to be complex fills. So I've got them selected. I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert to a complex fill. And they are now a complex fill. So that looks a little bit better. I left this one here as a satin stitch. Now the, the, the other thing I'd like to do is I don't, auto digitizers just choose which direction they're going to put the stitches. They just kind of randomly choose. Now, I like to kind of change things. Now, this one actually does a pretty good job. A lot of auto digitizers do the same angle in every section. This one does not do that. This one's a little bit more um, random so that the uh, design looks better if the stitches aren't all going the same way. If they're all going the same way, they have a tendency to look real flat. And if you change the angles of things, it gives it more depth. Okay, so I don't really like the way that they put the bat, so I'm going to change the angle. And to do that, I'm going to choose the first piece, which is this bigger part of the bat. And I'm going to go up and I'm going to the shape tool. I'm going to click on the shape tool and let me bring this up with my zoom so you can see this a little bit better. When I get my shape tool, there are two little balls on here, if I can find them, that are black and they have a string attached to them. That is the angle. 
So if I grab this one and I pull it down here, because I want my my uh, bat to be going the long way, I'm going to go grab the other one that has a black ball on the end, and I'm going to pull it up to the top. So there's one at the bottom here and one at the top. Okay, and then I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard, and look at the, the stitches tipped over. So now the stitches are tipped over. If you don't like that angle, do a different angle. Okay, that's just the angle that I liked, so I was going to choose that one. Okay, now I would like to do the same thing with the other parts of the bat. Okay, so I'm going to pull this over here so you can see it. Here is the second complex bill, which was that little section in the center there. It's very small. So let's bring it in even bigger so you can see what I'm doing. And this one was hard to find with the shape tool. I'm gonna go grab my shape tool again. And I'm looking for the little black string with the two round circles on it. So there it is. There's one of them and here's the other one. I want it to go the same direction. So I'm gonna put them going right to left basically and hit enter and it turned it over so that it's going the same direction as the other end of the bat. So let's go get the complex fill down here. So here's another piece of it. Then I got to find the little black lines. So they're going up and down right now. I want them to go left to right. So I'm going to grab my the little black circles and I'm going to move them in about the same angle. And if it's not perfect, it, it's going to look really good. Okay. And then I'm going to move on over to the end of the bat. Okay. And I think I might have left that one alone. Let me look at my picture. Here. I got my, my stitch up here. So let me look. I think I left that one alone. I did. I just left that one alone because it was going another direction and it gave it, um, it gave it some life. And then the satin stitch part, I just left that alone as well it was kind of making its way, traveling its way around the end, the edge of the back there. So I thought that looked good. Okay, so let's go back up here to the zoom and go to fit. Look at it again. So see, that, that cleaned that up a little bit. All right, I thought that, that looks pretty good. So now let's, let's move on down. Let's do another one. So the second color is this gold and it's the light gold. Okay, so the first one, whoops, the next one is this light gold. Okay, the first little thing is actually, you can't really see it now because I moved the black. Um, let me take the black off just for a minute so you can see it. It doesn't show up much in the design, it's very small, so I'm going to turn off. I just went down to the eyeball on the black and I just turned the black off. So what I'm looking at here on this gold satin is the little button at the top up here okay now i just left that as a satin because it's really teeny and it's just barely going to show so i just left that one alone the next one is a complex fill that looks good and this piece here is the piece that bothered me that that brim of his hat um i made that a complex fill it just looked kind of large. It's not very big, but it just looked out of place there for me. So I made that into a complex fill. So I'm going to right click on it. I've got it selected. I'm going to convert to a complex fill. Okay. And now that one is also complex fill. Now the, the angle on that is not bad. So I think I'll just leave it as it is. All right. And then whoops a second. We got to get into the right one here. Okay, and then the rest of them came up as a complex fill. So I was okay with that. And then his beak is that lighter gold. And if you look at the, the um, directions, they're all kind of different. And so I just left the directions the, the same because I thought they looked pretty good. Okay, so now let's go ahead. We'll turn back our black. We'll turn our black back on now. So I'm just going to go back and hit the eyeball. That's how you just turn colors on and off so you can see better. Sometimes it just helps you see, but you know, that doesn't look too bad. So now let's go on to the next color. Let's see. Um, this color is the darker gold. 
And these are all satin stitches. Now, I don't care for that first one. That's like underneath of his, the brim of his hat. I want that to be a complex fill because it looks kind of weird that way. So I'm going to right click. I've got it selected. Right click, convert to a complex fill. And I, and I like that. I think I'm going to like that better. The next two are satins. So that little thing under his lip is that darker gold. That one's okay, I think. And then the other one is a teeny tiny little piece between his teeth. And I just love those um, satin stitches because they were tiny little things, okay? So I think I'm good with those. And if you want to change the, um, stitch, the stitch directions, you can. Those were pretty good. Um, I thought that everything was pretty okay because they were not all the same direction. So I just kind of left them. All right. Okay. So let's go on to, let's see, that was the darker gold. And then the silver is his body. Okay. So the main part of the body, as you can see, is a complex fill. So I, I went, I opened that up with the little plus sign. The main part of it is a complex fill. I also want the rest of it to be a complex fill because see, then his hands are, are satin and they looked a little odd to me. So I wanna go ahead and I'm just gonna choose those two items that are satin stitches. I'm gonna control key, get the second one and I'm gonna go right click, convert to a complex fill, all right? So let's take a look at it now. So see now all of the body is the same type of stitch. I think it looks a little cleaner, okay? And I don't believe that I did, nope, I didn't do anything with the uh, direction because they, they weren't all going the same direction. They kind of are, but they're split up by things. So I thought it looked fine. And if you wanted to change it, again, you would choose the item you wanted to change. And then you would go get your shape tool and then find the little black balls, the little black circles. And it's always tough to find them sometimes. So I have to get my zoom tool and pull in here so I can find them. So sometimes I have trouble finding them. These were harder to find. So I think that's why I didn't change it. They're in here somewhere. But they're so sometimes I have to zoom way in to find them. I'm not even seeing them on this one, but it's going kind of like to the right. It's like at kind of at a 45 degree angle, but it looked okay. So I was good with that. All right. So we're going to leave that alone. Okay. So is everybody following me? So we're just kind of playing around with this. This is how you, how you can go in and you can play around with this and we can make it look totally different. All right, so now let's look at the, um, I think I've got to turn my page here. I've just got some notes for myself. All right, so um, the next section is the pink, or that is like his teeth and his eyeball and the baseball and all that, okay? Now, I wanted all of those to be a complex fill. They just looked weird as a satin stitch. They're real small but the complex fill just flattened everything out and it looked more uniform. So I'm just gonna choose the whole thing this time by clicking on the color and I can right click and convert to a complex fill. So everything that's not a complex fill will become one, all right? Now, if you want, again, if you wanna change the direction of the stitches, they're all kind of going the same direction as the body. So we'll go in there and play around with that maybe a little bit. So we can go in here and like, here's the eyeball. And you know, maybe I want that to go a little different direction. So let's bring it bigger so you can see. So here's my shape tool. We gotta find the little, okay, here's the black little lines. So let's maybe make it a little more this direction, okay? And then if you want to change your teeth, you can go in and you can do, since it's bigger, see, I can get a hold of those. Here's the little line. So, you know, if we want them to go a different direction, you know, we want them to go this way, we'll grab the, 
I have trouble with the start and stop points sometimes getting in the way. There we go. Okay. So then you can go back and you can change the size, the, the shapes, or the, I, I'm sorry, the directions of all of those things. Okay. And I don't know. I'm just going to look at mine a little bit. They're so small. I don't know that I actually changed mine much. I think I did change the baseball though. So let's go back and just change the baseball. I think I just changed the baseball one. And let's see here, where is it? Let's go back down so I can see where I'm at to fit. And let's find the baseball. There's all his teeth. There's the baseball, okay? So I think I did change the baseball the other direction. So we'll go up here, make this a little bigger and get our shape tool. And then let's change the baseball to this other direction like that, okay? Just to give it some interest. Okay, so there's there's that. So those are all complex fills now. Then let's see. Oh, I think the next step, let's go to fit. The next step was this little piece down here. It was like the little detail on the bottom of the baseball bat. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose it. And if you look up here in the... Um, properties box, it actually says that this is a run, which, which is what we want probably there. And, but they made it a bean stitch and it's a little bit thick. Um, it's when I stitched out the first time, it's like, it was really thick. So what I did is I chose that and I made the stitch length much shorter. So I made it 2.0 and I made it instead of a bean stitch, which is like a triple stitch. I made it a two-ply stitch. And then, oh, I have to pull this down so you can see my apply button. Sorry, my mouse is acting up here. There we go. Down to apply. Second here, I gotta find it. It's at the bottom, there we go. Okay, and apply it. Oops, it deselected everything. We'll try it again. So let's go back to that run, okay. I want to go to 2.0 and I'm going to go to two ply instead. And I'm just going to hit enter on my keyboard this time because that way, there it went. Um, sometimes my, when I have to move my mouse, my computer's really small. <laughs> so I have to move things up and down a lot to get into things. Okay, so I think I'm happy with um, that detail. Okay, and I apologize, my neighbor decided to mow his lawn just now. so. <laughs> He's up mowing right in front of the window here, so hopefully it's not too loud. Okay. Now, I don't know exactly what these were. The next two steps here must have shown up to the computer, but they didn't show anywhere. So I took these next two steps and just deleted them because they were like little itty bitty, like one stitch or something. So I just deleted those. Okay. So then the last thing is going to be that um, the outline. And the run that we just made below is, is in there now, which is okay because it's the same color. So that's good. Um, the next thing says complex fill. So this black outline This, this black outline like around the hawk is actually a fill. And I would like that to be a satin stitch because I want it to be like an outline. So if I just choose that, you can see it basically chose that entire outside part of my, of my hawk. If I just take that and right click on it and convert to a satin, Watch what it does. And it really cleans up that outline and it just looks really nice. So let me, let me, let's look at it now. So see how that really cleaned up that whole outline business all the way around the outside and look how nice and uniform it looks now. It just, I, I was really shocked at how well that did. And it makes it a nice little satin stitch outline around the whole thing. And some of the satin stitches are wider. You can see like under his arm and like 
on the back of his hat and stuff like that. It's wider, but it looked really good. Okay. Now, the second piece I said here, let's look at this. So here's our big satin stitch outline. Let's look at some of these other pieces. Then we had some detail on the left-hand side of his, of his body. I'm going to leave that, the first one, as a satin stitch because I was good with that. But the other pieces, I wanted them to stand out a little bit more. And they were parts of like the wings and his, like the feathers. And I wanted them to stand out a little bit more. So I'm just going to select the first one and then select the rest of them so that they're all going to be a, I'm going to convert all of those at the same time to a complex fill. So we're going to right click, convert to a complex fill. And that way they're going to sew at the end and be on top. Okay. So I'm actually, I don't even know that I um, changed the, the um, direction of those. I think I just left them as they were because it was fairly small, but I thought it really cleaned up the design, okay, by doing that. All right. So what do you think now? Doesn't that look a little bit better? I mean, I was amazed. I just sat here and kind of looked at it. I'm like, hey, that, you know, that doesn't look too bad. So I bet it'll sew out okay because it looks much better. Um, you know, we've got some contrast in the stitching. Um, we've got some complex fills and some satin stitches. We kind of moved around the, the um, direction of the um, stitches a little bit, you know. So I thought it didn't look too bad. I thought, well, heck, that's gonna sew out pretty well. So, but I did wanna do a few more things. So let's go ahead and we're going to change the colors so that we have the colors, the actual colors we want. So in order to do this, what I did is there's a lot of colors down here. And just to make it easier, I just wanted the colors that I was going to be using. So I went ahead and hit this little neg red negative um, sign down here towards the bottom right. That takes out all the colors I'm not using. So I'm just down to the six or seven I need. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six there. Okay. And I had cho chosen, I just figured out some colors that I thought looked good. So the tan is going to be, um, I'm going to use just the brother colors. And I used um, 348. Not sure where it is. Let's see if I can find it. 348. It was one of the tan colors. Khaki. Okay, so it's kind of a tan color. And I just clicked right on the little box and it changed all of that color to that to to 348 um the light gold so that's the second color i think i i clicked on the box down there brought up my little palettes and i wanted 206 so i'm just going to type 206 in and that's the harvest gold so i did kind of a lighter gold for that okay third color i'm going to go down and click on the box color number three wanted that to be 214, so it's a deeper gold, okay, and the gray, so I'm going to click on the gray box, and I want it to be silver, because it's already silver, so I'm just going to leave it that color, so the 005, which is the silver in the brother, and then, of course, you know, the pink, I, I want it to be white. So now this is where I can put my white in. So I'm just going to change that pink to white. And now he's going to have white teeth and white baseball. And then I want the last color to be 900 black. And right now it's olive green. So I would rather have 900 black and click OK. So now we've got the colors changed. So see how easy that was. So we got it all the colors we want. And that looks pretty good. I think I might have given Margaret a different color list, but that was what I used in the software just to make it simple, okay? All right, so there was one other thing in the original graphic. So let's go back and look at that original graphic. See, on his hat there, there's the letters LH. Well, you notice that I had taken those out. I actually painted over them because I tried it with those letters in there and it was just so, there was so much detail 
that they just would not even come out. You couldn't see them at all. It was just kind of mushed all together. So what I did after I got the hat, because the hat looks great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my text tool and we're just going to add those letters back in. And they're not going to be quite exactly the same, but remember this design is like um, four inches wide and two inches tall. So we need to have the letters not be quite so detailed. So I took my text tool, which is the T and I'm just going to click on the design page. And then I went to my small letters because remember, again, this is really tiny and the letters need to be about a quarter of an inch tall ish. So I, all I did was I chose my aerial and there's small ones, these little teeny yellow, they say aerial small. So I just wanted a small, simple letter so that you could read it when it was sewn out. Okay. So I'm just going to type in L. So let's do the first one and we'll just type in a capital L and I'm going to hit enter. Oops, second here. There we go. I need to type L and then, then type hit apply. Sorry guys. So here's my, my, my L over here. And then we're going to type the H separately. So I'm going to click down here on the design page again. And once again, and then type in the letter H for little Hawks, I believe is what it was. Okay. And we'll look at the picture again. I needed to look at that picture. So I knew how the letters went. So like the L is sort of like the center line of the H. So I just sort of configured them in that orientation. So here's my H. I'm going to get my select tool. It's a little easier to move these letters around. So I'm going to bring the H up here to my L and I'm going to pull the L so that the L is sort of like on top of the H. And I didn't do anything about, you know, taking any stitches out or anything. I just kind of configured them so they looked like, sort of like the picture. Okay. And you could do the, the L is going to sew first and then the H is going to sew. So the H is going to be on top of it. Okay. And I thought it looked pretty good. So I'm going to select both of those items together. Let's get them both selected. And then what I did is I grouped them. So I, I touched the little group button up here. And then I needed to make them just a little smaller. So I'm just going to pull the corner in so that they come in together. And I'm going to pull it over here to my hat. I think that's going to be about right. And then I needed to rotate it a little bit just so they look like they were standing upright on the hat. So I, I played around with the angle just a little bit. That looks better. Okay like that. And I would like my letters also to be black. Okay. So I, I'm going to choose those gray letters and I'm going to right click on the number six color block, which we already um, changed. Right click on that to make those black as well. So now I have the black letters with the black. It'll, it'll, they'll sew at the end of the black um, outlines and stuff. Okay, so that way, I thought that the LH was very readable. You know, again, this is a very tiny design, so we don't want um, too much detail there, but you could see that it said Little Hawks on it, or LH, okay? All right, so what do you think? Is everybody uh, kind of understanding where I'm going with this? It was, it was a fun, fun project for me because it, I was sort of like a dog with a bone. <laughs> I wanted to figure out how to get this to work in this auto digitizer. The auto digitizer is very good in this program, but it also needs to have some help with the, um, you know, it needs to have some help with the graphics so that it, it, it doesn't have too much stuff to go to. Okay. All right. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. I think it looks pretty good. I mean, it, it does sew out quite well, actually. Um, I wish I, I wish I'd forgotten. I forgot to take the picture so that you, I could bring it up on the screen. I'll bring up the software class um, picture on the 
on the um, on the on the group so you can see it. But it does sell out quite well. But at this point now, I need to get those laces back on there. So I just had to kind of do some drawing. So I'm going to zoom in here so I can see what I'm doing. And I am not a very good drawer. So I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. Okay. So I'm going to go get my, my run tool because I just wanted to make these little laces a run. Okay. And then I'm going to, um, let's change this number seven down here. Cause, cause remember when we did the letters, it came up with another number color. I'm going to left click on number seven and I'm going to bring it up as the brother red. So I did use seven colors. I thought I did. So I'm going to make it red and I got my run tool and I'm going to right click on the seven because I want to do these in red, my little laces. And then what I'm going to do, I've got my tool on here. I'm going to just freehand draw this. Now, I'm not a very good drawer, but I was able to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of click, and I know I want the laces, okay? So I'm going to, I need to kind of go down and make some a B, maybe go back. And I want this all to be in the same line. So I made a V, but I backed up on it myself, okay? And then I'm going to go forward. And then I'm going to go make another V. I'm going to go back to my starting point and over to the other side of the V and back to my starting point and then forward. Okay. And you have to kind of curve it. And then I'm going to go down again. Okay. So, and like I said, I'm not a very good drawer. So I had to do a little fix up when I got done. Okay. And I'm, I'm just going to keep going across the, I'm kind of trying to curve it a little bit. But I'm going back to the center of the V and then forward. Because I want this all to sew out in one line. Like that. And then back to the center and then forward. And then, oh, did Margaret, did you get to stitch it? Okay. So I'm going to go forward and then I'm going to make another V. Okay. Now, like I said, this is not, my other one looks a little bit better than this one did. Okay. So there's my laces. And then we want some kind of going the other way. And they, they're not very curved. I would probably go back and I might draw them again. They aren't very curved, but that's how I did it. So I went forward. So I went up to the V, back to the original, over to the other side of the V, back to the original point, and then forward. And then made it the other V, okay, like this. And I just kept going back and forth until I got all the way across. So that way it'll sew con cont continuously all the way across, okay? Now, what I did with the other set of laces, and I need to go back and redraw these a little bit. But what I did with the, with the laces is I selected my laces and I copied up here and I pasted my laces and then I mirrored my laces and rotated them so that they were going the other direction. Oops, I, I think I mirrored them two ways. Let's go back. There we go. I think I mirrored them this way and this way so that they were going the other way down here. And then I just deleted part of it. So like I wanted it to just go to his finger here. Okay, so um, like here, I wanted I wanted to get rid of some of the laces here. So what I did to do that, I went back to my shape tool again, and like this is the the start point. Let's get rid of some of these. Let's see. Yeah, well, now we can do it this way. So let's pull the start point down, and I can go back to these little blue nodes, and I can see I can delete nodes so that I don't have as many nodes on here. So I'm just hitting delete on my keyboard. And then we're going to make this shorter. And it's the same. So I didn't have to draw it again. I only had to draw it once. I'm just redoing it and making it shorter. Okay, so let me hit enter. So we got part of it done. Okay. And then 
I think what I did is I made, I was real close here. So I took my, I took the green starting point back there. I selected again with the select tool. And then I think I just kind of squished it down a little bit. And the bottom, my bottom laces were just slightly smaller. But that was the way I did it. So I didn't have to draw twice. And these are a little bit too straight. They need to be a little more curved. But you can you can get the idea of how I did it. And and it, it was just some, it doesn't have to be very big. It's going to barely show. But it, it is much cleaner to sew out this way than it was with the auto digitizer trying to get those teeny tiny little lines going. Okay. All right. So let's go down to fit. We still got a little bit to do here. We're about done. I'm going to go to fit. So that looks, you know, that looks better. Okay. And like I said, I would, I would redo my laces. I'm not too happy with them, but I think you get the idea. So there's our laces. Now we need to finish this. This um, program has a lot of really awesome tools in it that help us to get the design um, to sew well without really having to know how to do that. Um, it has a really cool thing called resequence by color. So we really don't have too much to go by here other than remember the LH and the, um, the outline are actually the same colors. So if I go up here and go to edit, and down to resequence by color. If you noticed over here, we have 900 for the outlines and everything, and then the then the black um, LH is separate. If I go to resequence by color, you'll notice now that that disappeared, so that the letters are now in with the other colors. Okay. And the last thing that's going to sew out right now is the laces. But what I did is I actually took the laces and I moved them up, dropped them down on top of the, the white so that they would sew right before the outline. So that like the edges of them would be covered up with the outline. Okay. So that was resequenced by color. So now all the colors are together that need to be together and then they will sew out. The other thing I did was I did edit there's two more tools in here that are really cool. Edit, select all. Then there's a really cool thing up here under edit called optimize sequence. So in other words, it's going to make it so in a logical order automatically. So you don't have to go in and try to figure out, well, this needs to sew and then this needs to sew. It's going to keep it from jumping around so much. So I'm just going to let it optimize the sequence. And now when it sews, we can, and we'll go do that in a second so you can kind of see it sew. I'm going to do one more though. There's edit, select all, and there's one more thing. It's called optimize entry and exit points. So edit, optimize entry, exit points. And so it will make it start and stop and it will make it sew out in a very logical order. Okay. So Let's look, watch it sew. Now, I learned to digitize by watching stuff sew. And there's a little, you know, slow redraw in this program. So I can click on this little button. It looks like a little, like a little speedometer kind of. And it comes up like with like a, you know, a recorder. And I can press the go button and it's going to show it sew out. And it's going to sew out in a very logical order by color. And I, I I'll pull it. I'll pull it so it goes a little bit faster. So here's the baseball bat, doing the little pieces of the baseball bat. Then it's doing his hat, then the lower part of his hat, and now it's doing his body. And it looks like it's sewing nicely. Then here's his teeth and his baseball, and then here's the outline. And it's going to sew so that there's not a lot of jump stitches in it because we optimized it. Okay, and then it does his, the letters at the end. Okay, so that's that's a tool that is really nice, if you, especially if you're not sure how it should sew. If you just tell the, the software to, to help you, it will help you get it to sew in a good logical order. Okay, 
So now I was pretty happy with that. I thought, heck, you know, that looks pretty good. So there's one more thing I have to do though. So this is a C2S file. And of course we wanna save the C2S. So we're gonna go file, save as. Oh, you didn't do that, Lynn? So that might have taken care of that, all those jump stitches. You didn't optimize it. That might have helped. Because that does help, especially when you're doing a whole bunch of stuff, like a whole bunch of stuff, like separate designs all together. That would really help. Okay, so we're going to save as, and I, and I named him Little Hawk. Okay. And we're going to put him, I'm just going to put this one on my desktop. And I want to save this as a C2S file. All right. I like to save, um, did it go to my desktop? I don't know if it did. Yeah. Okay. Nope. It didn't go to. There we go. Okay. Save. All right. So I like to save a C2S file because then I can go back. Um, I didn't, you didn't do the entry and exit one. So that might've helped Lynn. Yeah. I usually do both of them. With a, especially with the auto digitizer. So I always save that C2S file because you know we need to go back and fix things occasionally later. And then that way I can. So what I did then is I saved that C2S. But now I want to sew this. Now Margaret wanted to sew it on um, a t shirt. And if you look at the top up here, just as it is, it's about 12,000 stitches. So that's quite a lot of stitches even still in that small area. So I wanted to make sure that it would sew well on a t-shirt and it would sew well, and I did it twice because I wanted it to, to be like on a cotton uh, quilt block. So I did this twice, okay? So this program has a wonderful thing in it called Click to Stitch. And what that is, is you tell the, pro the program what kind of fabric you're gonna sew on, and it will add the underlay, the, um, it will add the pull compensation, everything you need to sew this out successfully on the fabric you're gonna do. So what I do is I go into that, pro I went to file, I'll do it again so you can see, file, click to stitch. And then I'm going to choose my type of fabric. Well, the type of fabric that that um, Margaret wanted it on was knit. And I looked in here in the knit, there's heavy like sweatshirts. There's knit light jersey onesie t-shirt. That's what she wanted was a t-shirt. So I'm going to choose knit light jersey onesie t-shirt. And then the type of design, it says medium. So there's no other options there. So we'll just leave it at medium. The shape of the design is open and closed. There's no other options there. And it asks you, are you going to hoop the fabric? So yes, I was, I was gonna hoop it in a regular hoop. If you're gonna be using, if you don't wanna hoop it, if you wanna put it like on sticky paper or something, tell it no, because then it will help you also with the stabilizer, okay? So I'm gonna say yes, because I wanted to do that. And then I'm gonna click next. And when I get to this style screen, I all of those things, it says new style settings, apply new density, apply new underlays, and apply new pull compensation. I need to hit the apply button because I want the program to help me with those things so I don't have to deal with it. So I'm just gonna click apply. And it's gonna say changing style setting is recommended only for designs composed in this application. Yep, we're good with that. I'm gonna tell it yes. And then it did a thing, it's done it already, okay? I'm gonna click next. Did it do it? Nope, must be still thinking. It's dinging at me, so it must still be thinking. I have a lot of stuff running on the computer, so sometimes it gets a little freaked out when I have to do stuff like this. Let me close one of the programs down here. Let's go back. Hopefully it didn't lock up on me. It's still dinging at me. Did it work? 
Oh, it's still spinning. Hopefully it'll 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 pull itself out of it here. Usually it doesn't take very long, but like I said, I've got a lot of stuff um, running on the computer, so sometimes it freaks it out a little bit. Because it's, then it's going to ask me to save it. So hopefully it didn't lock up on me. But what it does is it adds the density, the underlay, and the pull compensation for the fabric I chose to that design. And it was still around 12,000 stitches. So it was, it was quite a lot of stitches. Um, so what I did when I sewed it out on t-shirt, because I sewed it out a couple of times to see what my, um, to see what my look was gonna be, you know, what, how it was gonna turn out. I discovered that the best way to stitch that this particular design, because it's still fairly dense. I mean, it's 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 a lot of stitches in a small amount of space, but it's sewed out okay. Um, I used a medium cutaway fusible on the back of the t-shirt. So I fused a piece of medium cutaway. I tried it with the mesh, but the mesh wasn't quite enough, okay? Because it wasn't quite, it had a lot of stitches in it. Okay, and I put a medium cutaway fusible on the back of my t-shirt and then I floated a piece of tearaway underneath and then I laid a piece of um, water soluble topping on top. And it does not, it is not um, dance, you know, it is not, um, it's pliable, it's not hard even though it's got that little bit more stabilizer in there, but that really worked better than the mesh because the mesh just didn't, it was a little bit too soft and I had a little gap between his hat. I don't think we're gonna get anything going here. So I think it's locked up on me. Sorry guys, every now and then that happens if I have all the screen sharing and all this stuff um, going at the same time. So let me see, I may have to just do, get it to stop here. I think it's just kind of locked. Okay. So the next thing that would come up after you hit next, it would come up and ask you to save it. So what I do when I save the ones that I've done, run through click to stitch, I, I save it with like little Hawk t-shirt behind it. So I know that's what I saved it as, as a t-shirt. So that that's all, the only thing I'm going to sew that design on. Then I went back and I undid, you know, I clicked my undo button up here, the, the back arrow, and I saved it again as a cotton piece and then saved it as with that. So that I, oh, but I would like to leave my C2S file in its original form instead of saving it with those stitch file things in it. I always go back and just leave it by itself. So I hit the black back button. So that is the way I originally saved it. Um, that way I can go back into my original design without, you know, the other alterations in it. So sorry, I, I, my computer decided it was going to do its little number here tonight. So give me a second. And we'll see if I can get it to stop here. See if I can just end that. There we go. Okay, so let me open that up again and I'll, I'll bring up the t-shirt design. I've got the t-shirt and the cotton design so you can see the difference in the in the um, number of stitches it had in it. Okay, so if I open up, let me open up. I've got them done here in just a second. Little hawk. So here's the t-shirt design that we just saved. And it has 12,444 stitches or 40 stitches in it. Okay, and if I go in and open the one that says cotton, it only has 10,546 stitches, but it, they're, they're, they've got the correct pull compensation and the correct density and the correct um, underlay for that fabric. Okay, so they will vary in stitch amounts. So like the one that I put up on the, the picture that I put up on the groove is done on the cotton. 
So it doesn't have as many um, stitches in it as the t-shirt one. So you can see down at the bottom, I wrote Little Hawk Cotton, Little Hawk T-shirt. So make sure that you marked it so you know what it is that you're using so that you get it on the right fabrics, okay? So yeah, sorry that that, that, that um, didn't work. It, it's sometimes the computer just has too many things going on at the same time. So I don't know if I can try it again and see if it works. Or my computer's trying to do an update right now or something. You know, it does that too sometimes. So here's my little hawk. This is the C2S file that I did. This is the original one. Okay, so here's my original one. File, click to stitch to see if it'll work with this one. We'll try the t-shirt again. T-shirt. And yes, and I'm going to click next. I'm going to apply. Do you want to continue? Yes. It's going to work this time, I think, maybe. Okay, I think it worked this time. And then I'm going to click Next. And then this tells me what to use for stabilizer. The one thing that I just that I did change, it says fusible poly mesh. I used a fusible cutaway, just the old-fashioned the old cutaway because it gave a little bit more stability. Okay, Topper, all right, and then click Finish. And when you click Finish, then it comes up and asks you to save it. This one I wanted to save is Little Hawk, and I, I told it Little Hawk uh, T-shirt. Can't spell T-shirt tonight. T-shirt, and then down here, save as type. I wanted to save it as a PES file so that I could save it, so that I could um, sew it in my machine. Okay. And then this is my C2S file that I'm still in. I'm going to hit the back button so that I didn't change that um, that density or anything. I just left this. This is the original design. Okay. And if it asks me, do I want to save it? I'm just going to tell it no, because I want to leave it the original way it was. Okay. That way my C2S is just my original design and I can change it any way I want. Okay. And then I did the same thing with the cotton one. So let me see if I can get to, let me see if it'll let me go to um, Facebook again. Let me close this down and then I'll show you the picture. I'm sorry, I forgot to take a picture of it <laughs> and put it in this folder. So if, I can let, if it'll let me go into here and then open up another browser window. And I can show you what it looked like. Go to the event. Maybe. More events. Okay, so here is the picture. Okay, so let's go up to it. So this was done on the cotton fabric, and um, it looks just a little wrinkly there just because I'm so close up, but it really wasn't wrinkled at all. And then I also sewed it on a, on a t-shirt. My t-shirt was just a little scrappy t-shirt I had at the store. So I didn't take a picture of that one because it was kind of ugly, but it really did sew out well, and it and it um, and it has quite a few stitches. This one had like around ten thousand, and the other one has about twelve thousand. Okay, so that's the auto digitizer. Yeah, I was very very happy with the results. I had a lot of fun learning more about it. Um, I had it's been a long time since I've really gotten a good design with the auto digitizer. So I wanted to show you then. Let's put this down. I wanted to show you then in the software where there are a lot of images you can play with. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, I normally digitize manually, but if you just have something simple that it's a decent graphic, you can get a really good result by just playing with what you what it comes up with. So like if I hit the little wizard again and I click browse, I can go into the software. So let me tell you where these are. You need to go to this PC and you need to go to your C drive, which is your normal drive, go into Dime, and then go into where it says Images. And there's a whole bunch of images in here. There's a whole gob of, of bitmaps. There's, you know, there's lessons in here. There's, um, 
a whole bunch of different folders in here that have images. And then you can go play with the auto digitizer. So you can see there's a whole bunch of them in here. Just, just play with the auto digitizer. There's some folders in here too. There's a whole bunch of bitmaps in here. So you can just go in and play with there. And there's, there are a lot of, lot of um, things you can play with in the, in the digitizer. But then if you need to, you know, open it up and paint through the, through the um, software and then just do some fixing. Cause you know, I often have to erase or add or, you know, recolor something and it really works really well. So, okay. All right, so are there any questions? And like I said, I didn't give you this graphic because I didn't, it, it, I didn't feel it was mine to give. And, but um, go play with the auto digitizer, you know, find some, some fairly simple, you know, pictures and, and go from there and see what kind of results you can get with it and then do some work in paint and um, fix your designs or fix your, your graphics up. Make sure they're the right size, that type of thing. So any anything, any other questions? Everybody, hopefully I didn't bore you to death. <laughs> Lots of information. There is. I know that it was a lot of information, um, but I think if you just go play, um, the auto digitizer is actually pretty simple. You can see it doesn't really do a lot, but you can really fix afterwards. And just doing simple things like changing from a satin stitch to a complex fill make, may make the entire design look different. Okay. So that's why I was so surprised at how good I could get the design to look when I just started playing with it. Oh, would you go to, through just, you mean how to get the um, graphics again, Deb? I, you, you go to, when you, when you go into the auto digitizing, I'll show you where they are this way. To get the designs, they are, go to, go to this PC on your computer and your C drive. And then it's in the dime folder in your C drive. And then it's going to say images. Okay, so here's all the different images. There's a bunch of them in here. And you can do that through the wizard. I, it, I didn't do it through the wizard this time, but I just wanted to tell you where they were. So they're on this PC, the C drive, and then dime, and then images. And there's a bunch of them in here to play with. So, and they're, they're all going to work pretty well in the um, auto digitizer. Okay. All right. So next week, we're going to start Hunter Star. I've been working on it all day and I'm going to have some pictures to show you probably tomorrow. Okay. Um, and I'm working on a six inch version of it. I haven't done the six inch blocks for a long time. So I decided to do those. And then um, that will be the next two weeks. We'll be working on the quilt. So, okay. If, if there's no other questions, if you have any other questions, though, you know, contact me through Facebook, through, you know, messenger, whatever. And, um, but I thought this was a fun class. I was, it was, it was quite a challenge to play with this. And once I got to playing with it, I was very, very happy with the results. So, Anyway, what is the name of the free software used to convert? Oh, the PDF, the free software I used, it's called Bullzip, B-U-L-L-Z-I-P, Bullzip uh, PDF Printer. And you should, if you just type that in Google, you'll be able to find it pretty easy. Okay. All right. So we, I will see you next week for Hunter Star. Haven't decided what we're going to do in June yet for a software class. I'm kind of thinking of some new things. So I'll be letting you know pretty soon. And if you have any questions about the auto, dig auto digitizer, let me know. So everybody have a good evening and I'll see you next week on So Along with Jan. Thanks, everybody.